everybody. Welcome to Camel City Chat. I'm your host, John McPherson, and I'm joined by the Honorable, see, I can say that, <laughs> Jeff McIntosh, uh, City Councilman for the Blank Ward. Northwest Ward. Northwest Ward. Thank you for filling that one in there. Uh, Jeff is a fellow realtor. Um, he's been on uh, Real Estate Radio with us in the past before, and uh, just an all-around good guy that really cares a lot about our city, so I'm glad you're here. Uh, we're going to gonna, we're gonna get started on that, but i got to do the, the obligatory that I didn't okay. say that I was ever going to do, and that is please subscribe, like, and comment on our videos. We've got our channel here on YouTube, and uh, greatly appreciate you watching with us this hump day, or whatever day you watch it. Jeff, you ready? I'm ready. I you think. know the three. I can't believe it. I said, you know, I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to do that. He goes, well, I know what three questions are. And so <laughs> it means a lot. It means a lot to me that I'm, you actually. I'm sensing, sensing a Monty Python moment here. No, no. I, it means a lot to me that you actually know the questions ahead of time. So, um, all right. You ready? Yes. Where are you from? How long you been in Winston? Uh, born and raised at the Jersey Shore. Okay. Seaside Park, about a mile and a half from the infamous Jersey Shore house that okay. was full of New Yorkers, by the way. Right. Those yeah. weren't Jersey, Jersey yeah. people. Uh, born and raised there. Moved down to Winston-Salem to go to Wake Forest in 1976. Um, it met my criteria. It was academically quite a good place to go. It was relatively inexpensive. At the time, it was $3,500 a year mm -hmm. board tuition, and it was more than 300 miles away from home. Okay. So those were the things that I had to had to fit. So 1976. Yep. So you started in August. When did you graduate then? 1980. Okay. So you were here when... Wake Forest played LSU in the Tangerine Bowl in 1979. Yes, indeed. And I was at that game. Tangerine Bowl. And I was not. A bunch of my friends were. Yeah. I, I couldn't make it. And then we lost like 34 to 10 or something like that. But, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, no, a friend of my brother's, Landon King, who is now a doctor in – at John Hopkins, lecturer, teacher, or whatever, uh -huh. was uh, number 13. He's the guy that – uh, intercepted the ball against Carolina with a broken hand that season. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Venuto. Remember Jay that? Venuto, John absolutely. Makovic, all the greats. Yeah. yeah so we, we did make it to the Orange Bowl the year that Wake went to the Orange Bowl. Yeah. 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 So that, well, that's good. Yeah. Threw some oranges down on the field. Indeed. And I couldn't believe uh, at the Love Out Loud thing that was uh, earlier this month, um, uh, the athletic director from Wake told us that, what was it? Um, uh, the Duke. Carolina game? No, no, it was, it, I guess the Duke Carolina game mm -hmm. had, you know, the number one premier matchup that everyone still watches, even with Carolina not being as good. So that right. game had less viewers than the, um, the bowl that uh, Wake played football in. So it's like, you know, we have to capitalize on that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. I mean, you know, several, I mean, almost several million people watched yep. Wake Forest playing that. Yep. So that was cool. Yep. All right, question two. Okay. Favorite place to eat? I'm going to be a politician on this one, even though I don't have an opponent. You're not running a pose. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, you know how I'm going to trick you on this. How? Where is the last restaurant you and your beautiful bride Susan ate at? Okay. So that's how I was going to uh, I okay. was going to finesse this. My current favorite. All right. Right. For the last month and a half, we've been going to Quanto Basta. Can't go wrong there. Okay. So yeah. that, um, you know, Mellow Mushroom we love, Jeffrey Adams we love. Um, Oh, Mazelle's right. is, is always a oh, favorite Mazelle's filling good, yeah. station. Yeah. So, I mean, we try to, we do try to actually kind of change it up some, but my right. current favorite is going to Boston. Have you been to the new uh, Poke Bowl place? I know it's just I have not. Okay. I have not. I've that's, been uh, eyeing that. That's uh, Dave that. Dave Hillman yep. of uh, Brook Street and yep. Quiet Pint. Yep. Love Quiet Pint. He does a really good he job. He does a good job, yeah. yeah. He and, knows how uh, to run a restaurant. You know, this uh, this Venn place down the street here, we've yep. started to go to when, like, everyone else is crowded. They usually are, are pretty now, pretty good. aren't those the same guys who are getting ready to open the butcher, high-end butcher and restaurant on Broad Street? It may be, yeah, because that I was going that, that was going to be my um, surprise. You know, oh, what, so now what, you're trying to do Lou's thing. <laughs> yeah, I saw it already this <laughs> but, somewhere. I think Smitty it's, now it's, announced it's, it. I know. Jason Thiel threw it out. Yeah. A couple people threw it out. So that was yeah. That was yeah, cool. That's right. It was Jason that said yeah. that. So let me, let me, let's go back to restaurants for a second okay. because I have um, – The whole show is going to be about restaurants because I like to eat. So go ahead. Me too, absolutely. Yeah. So I've gone on, gone on two sort of tears um, for lunchtime things. Okay. I went through a period where I had to have pho – at every place in town that did pho, Vietnamese, okay. Vietnamese. Right, so Super. the only place I've gotten it in town is um, on Stratford. Yes. Yeah, whatever the name of that place is. And I like theirs. I think yeah, theirs it's good. is, is yeah. high quality. Yeah. There's a Malaysian restaurant out, um, Country Club and Peace Haven in the Harris Teeter Shopping Center. Next to Rick Babuzzi at State Farm Insurance, located conveniently on Martin View Drive. There oh, go. there you go, Rick Early. Yeah, go <laughs> ahead. All right. Um, 
they they serve a very good right. bowl. It's um, like uh, it's a flower or something's in the name of it. I can't remember what the name yeah, of it is. Me too. Okay, right? But they're good. Thai Harmony downtown does every Monday. They do a duck pho that is really good. Okay, it's really good. So anyway, I went through this period. Where I sampled them all. Right. Then I went through a period where I was doing chicken wings. Don't do the hot dogs thing. Now I'll do the chicken wings thing. Chicken wings I was eaten, fun. I haven't eaten a hot dog in probably two or three years now. I, I just like gave an up occasional. on them. I, like nah, I gave up on them. I'll do a brat, but I'm not a hot dog fan anymore. So, so where do we go? Chicken. Wings well, the thing that was, was difficult about chicken wings. Is I got my two favorite sort of traditional buffalo chicken right. wings, right? Okay. And that's um, Real Q on Country Club used to be um, Little Richards. Across the street from Darrow's, across the street from East Coast Wings. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, no, no, so okay, yeah. Their yeah. traditional right. buffalo wings are really, really good. Okay. And then Burke Street has really good traditional buffalo Burke wings. Burke Street does, yeah. Um, and uh, so when you said across, uh, I, I was thinking, so right next to Marco's Car Wash. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so Ronnie's, like Ronnie's, but Ronnie's. I don't get that far west. Right. I mean, I'm, I, I know. Right, I understand. Yeah. So I do like Ronnie's. Ron, you know, there's always, uh, they're too small, they're too whatever. I'll tell you a place, it's a it's a chain, but uh, try the Bee Sting at Hickory Tavern okay. um, and get them, uh, the, get them crispy. They're pretty good. So they do with a like a honey and they're and they're hot, but yeah. uh, they're good. Um, Camel I, City Barbecue has really great good wings, smoked, but it's a different. It's a different what about wing. Bibs? Bibs? Bibs, is you excellent. get a, you know you go get chicken wing. You and I get chicken wing. It's the size of this. You go to Bibs and it's like this freaking yeah. big. It's got the wing. It's got half the back. on Camel it City's got a big serving too. Yeah. Um, uh, Foothills does a smoked yeah. wing that's really good. I'm trying to think of where else down um, that we've gone. So I've been there. Uh, it, uh, of course, Quiet Pine has good wings yep. too. I love wings, yep. so if I mean, you want to do that again, okay, good. yeah, I mean, I'm I'm in on the that. The sleeper yep. is this little place, and it's it's the bowling alley right. off of Peter Creek Parkway, just south of I-40. So you're talking down near the McDonald's, yeah, Park Park Parkway Lanes, right? Yeah, Parkway okay. Lanes. You know, another good place really good. that the reason why I looked at you perplexed on the first one was um, I was thinking that you were thinking about the place that's right there near Trey Nani's in that Jonestown Shopping Center. Uh, right. They do good wings, but I can't remember what the name of that place yeah. is. And they do a special day that they do like a, a, a discount price. That's that's fun. I mean, I like to do sort of. Sounds those. like you and I have created yeah, yeah. a new <laughs> a new a travel across America there test every wing. Indeed. All Indeed. right. So the third question. Yep. This one's easy for you. What's your favorite thing to do? My favorite thing to do is read Smitty's notes to find out what's going on on the weekend. No, I mean, seriously. Yeah, I know. There's so much stuff going on. So, you know. Did you see that Facebook post the other day where, um, uh, is it Devin that's at Sika? And she yes. posts the, that, that's, you know, that's not a man, that's a mask. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go see that. Yeah. That was creepy. Yep. You know, so Sika, but go ahead. So we, Susan and I really do try to hit as much as we can. You know, it's like if you're bored in Winston Salem, you're not making the effort to find out what's going on. Correct. There's so much going on every yeah. weekend. I mean, the Arts Council is always doing stuff. Um, you know, Aperture Theater we both love. Uh, there's just tons of stuff. We try to get to Sika as often as possible. Ronaldo House, um, Sawtooth Galleries, you know, the Milton Road Center, you know. And and then, you know, you get into Old Salem, too, and you've got the um, the furniture thing, which I'm not a huge fan of. You know, one of my favorite things to do is go to an old house and just look at the toys with my daughter. Yeah. You know, up on the third floor. Um, the thing about Old Salem, I'm glad you brought that up, but if you haven't walked, just walked the streets, get off the square and just kind of walk through the back streets over there. There's a there's a bed and breakfast over there that Susan and I stayed at one time. So we had a weekend to kind of right. just mosey around. It's amazing. Oh, it's it's awesome. It, it, I hate the thing that's going on right now with, with where they're doing some of the road work because yeah. we went and, and, and we're there and it was just like, oh, we'll just. But my daughter went into one of the houses. A lady was in there. She had the, the boards out and had the quilt stretched across it. And my daughter was sitting. We were all just talking. And my daughter was learning how to quilt. Yeah. It was a great experience. She's five years old. I mean, yeah. she loves to sew. I, I like what Frank Van Yon's doing, the new president, of uh, trying to activate some of the spaces and make it more a place that you'll go during – you know, just on a on a weekend, an odd weekend. Uh, you don't have to make it sort of a destination. You go down to see music. At, you know, Muddy Creek's opening a uh, location right. there. Yeah, they're going but just to, the old to get two, people two to come back on a regular basis rather than once every four or five years. I think oh, that's I, good. I can tell you, you know, when I got elected um, unopposed uh, for it's the only way to go. Yeah, I know. For president of the the Realtors Association, I said, you know, I, I need to be more present for the group that I represent. So I joined Renolda House. Mm -hmm. Um, and I joined Old Salem. The Old Salem one, and Renault Houses too, but the Old Salem was a deal because yep. you can go 
take up to six of your friends with you yep. and go through. And so that's what we did. Yep. And I mean, it's there, you know, love out loud. I want to get involved with them. We're going to have them on and, and, and do some stuff. But I mean, there are so many opportunities to be involved in your community um, and also at the same time enjoy the benefits of history and something to do. So the fact that you, through your position as the, you know, the, the president of WSRR, right. me as an elected official, it kind of forces you to, to go do these things. And afterwards, you start doing them. You go, why didn't I do this before? I've lived okay, so and and I've told this story several times, and and we're going to have uh, some several people on from Winston Salem State, um, including the athletic director, and and I don't know if we're, it's just going to be her, if it's going to be um, some of her team. I've uh, one of the things is is you know you have two boys, uh, you know you got to be a dad, you got to be you know you got to teach them how to, to to do certain things, and and you know uh, appreciate a relationship with your wife and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I have started to do things with my daughter that are. Um, centric to ladies. Mm -hmm. So we go to lady basketball games. We do things like that because I have to have female role models in Mm -hmm. my daughter's Mm -hmm. life. And I mean, as we do all these things and get involved, you know, the thing that I will tell you is, is it makes you understand better how people are. Um, It also, with regards to Winston-Salem State, why I started this whole thing, and yes, I do take my ADD medicine, is... It was 2012. I've lived here since 77, just as a, before I set foot on Winston-Salem State campus. Mm, yep. And then I'm like, why was I not here? Yep. So, you know, Winston-Salem State football is about what it was like when I was at Appalachian State. Yep. And definitely when you were at Wake Forest. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's good football. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you want to pay to see something else, go. But it's a block and a half away from, yep. you know, an – or, you know, well, and the gateway event, there. and the gateway yeah. event for most people is National Black Theater Festival because yeah. they have, they do a bunch of productions on campus and they're just mind blowing. You know, Anderson State Center, of the all art, that stuff, just, yeah. And there's a and the Anderson Center has been a really good place to hold community events. And yep. They go things there all the time, so it's a real jewel. All right, so we've we've we're we're going to go uh, through a whole bunch of stuff here. All right. Um, so you said you're you, you basically said you're, you're running for <clears> your third term. Running for, first elected in 2013, reelected in 2016, and now. 2020. Will so be it, it it wouldn't be 12 years though because we had the we had one, adjustment. We had one term that where the state legislature lined us up with the presidential cycle instead of the off year. And how much is that? I mean, that's awesome for you, isn't it? I mean, when you ran and it was an off year, it's kind of like how many people really show up. Whereas in now, but then you coattail. I mean, if it's a sweep for one party or the other, because the you, difference yeah, you guys are part of. So the difference. Lewis, the isn't. difference I found it, and I'm the only one who has had a competitive race. In 2013, off year, and then the following year, 2006, or following term, 2016 was the first time we were on, we lined up with the president, and I was the only one that had a competitive race. Mm-hmm. All the other council members didn't, and the difference was nobody paid attention to the council race. Mm-hmm. No one wanted to hear what your positions were. Oh no, Everybody all they wanted to focused. do was vote for whoever. Yeah. So you I can vote straight ticket one way or the other. So you got lots more votes, lots more people voting. But there just wasn't – I didn't get the sense that people were as interested in the issues of what was going on in Winston-Salem. And let's face it, those issues touch your life Much more, more on, a, on a daily basis than the presidential. But honestly, uh, you know, something came to mind that, that, that to explain it to myself would be you basically were the commercial on the primetime show. You know, because people were going to fast forward it. Some may watch it, some may not. But, I mean, it was, it was really <clears> – it was, it was a secondary thing compared to what else was going on. The other, the other thing that I think – does us a disservice is that running in a presidential cycle if you're not the incumbent mm-hmm. you got to break through so much noise just to be just to get people to recognize that you're out there so i so think you're okay with it now <laughs> <laughs> no I, you know i'm still going to forums yeah, i'm right. going to still knock on doors i don't have to ask for money that's a really nice thing but i'm it's it's incumbent on me to get out every four years and you know put well, myself out there the only thing that i learned from the time that i ran for office is you always run until they tell you that you've won. Yep. You're always losing. Um, I ran the first time in Louisville in 1997. I was beating every single candidate by a landslide when the absentee votes came in. I mean, I'm like, holy cow, I'm going to be. I lost by 13 votes to Jane Welch. Hey, Jane. So then I got on planning board, then I ran the next time, and then I, you know, I ran, you know, I won by like 30 votes and then like 60 votes yeah. or whatever like that. I get the same number of votes as everybody else on the council, but <laughs> yeah, I was I'm number, uh, what, number six in your program, number one in your heart. <laughs> um, but um, 
that leads us to the next question. Um, and, uh, you know, the, it, it's basically why the heck you do this? Because I did it to two terms, which two years in Louisville and the phone calls and stuff like that. So, so why are you a council member? When I told my dad that I was running, my dad had been a council member in a small town I grew up in in New Jersey. He said, have you lost your mind? Yeah, you have. Um, Why don't you go ahead and be a broker in charge, too? <laughs> this job is a little less difficult yeah, than right, be a yeah, broker yeah. in charge um, or city manager. Right. Uh, so, you know, I've been involved in land use, zoning, development, that kind of stuff since I was in my 20s. Right. Um, neighborhood, neighborhood advocacy, started up a neighborhood watch, turned it into a neighborhood association, did that for nine years. My wife then took over, and she did it for nine years. So I've always kind of been involved from that point of view. In the in WSRAR, I've always been on committees. think it's really important for young realtors. Young realtors, get on committees. Please. I just did a, an orientation the other day, and it's like, I just beg them, just come to one meeting. That's all I need you to do. I think people, I think people view it as an intrusion into their business life. Right. It brings you business. You, no, you get business from it, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely get business um, from it. And I, I worked on my predecessor, Wanda Marshall's campaigns, her – second third and fourth campaigns so that gives you a taste for you know the sort of i love that for a campaign she was so nice to me I know. she's great bless her heart bless her heart rest in peace um and so when she knew that she was going to retire she took me out to lunch at west end cafe another favorite mm -hmm. and said you know explain the reasons why she thought i would chicken be salad. good to, chicken salad. <laughs> why i would be a good fit for the spot and i said wanda i'm gonna be able to retire my kids are going to be out of college. Right. Why would I throw myself back into the frying pan? Because Susan doesn't want you in the house. <laughs> well, that's that's true. Um, but so she said, well, think about it. And I did, and Susan and I talked about it. And it's, I mean, it really does fit a lot of my skill sets. I have a lot of the things that I think are important um, to be good at the job. If I didn't think I was going to be good well, at the job, I wouldn't have. All right, so we're going back seven years now? Yeah. So, folks, as we go uh, – and, and just check out the city website as we're, we're going to flip the camera around here a little bit. Um, go to cityofws.org. But as we go to break, you're looking at someone that had never spoken in front of a group before seven years ago. And now you do it all the time. All right, the time. so show the – Stabler, if you'll show cityofws.org, um, if you'll do that, and then we'll tell you some different sites on there when we come back. So just showed City of Winston-Salem now. There's a specific, specific, specific uh, search bar that you want us to put in, a search that you want us to put in there, and what's that? Right, so when you go to the landing page for cityofwinston-salem.org, right. search bar is right there prominent. Right. Put in census. Why is that important? <laughs> the rules of the game are... They're going to know too much. They're going to tax me. Right. What's going on? Right, so the rules of the game are... Money that gets distributed from Washington, D.C., that we have all paid our taxes into, it gets apportioned back out largely based on population. Mm -hmm. If we, if our population count is accurate, then we get our fair share of money out of D.C. for transportation, for housing, community development, block grants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. If it's not, we get less. So right. if people don't say that they live here or don't respond to it, then our count is low and it underrepresents us. So how am I going to, are you going to knock on my door like the old way or is it, am I going to get it? How do I know this? So go, coming around this time, we'll, there will be an electronic version. Okay. There'll be a mail, something in the mail and they'll be knocking on doors. So okay. all three methods. There's also an opportunity to volunteer to, to assist in that. Um, I'm and, not doing that. Well, did you knock on doors during your, during your campaign? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have fun doing that. See, I kind of like that. After I got myself out the door right. you know, and started knocking on doors and knocking on people, I, I like that. You mean like uh, follow up? I mean, call in, uh, call in your sphere of influence as a realtor? <laughs> Even that, I mean, I know, I know those people, and sometimes that's hard to do. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, 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 you know, you don't want to intrude in people's lives. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think volunteering for census, I got a buddy of mine just retired, and he was talking about he was trying to get a desk job for, Spences, for the census. And, and, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's just such a great thing, you know, uh, as as you've heard me say, we're the we're the number four sized uh, realtor association in the state. Mm -hmm. I want to and be the best. three. Oh, that, there's no question about that. I want to be the number three. We can take them. We're not that far away from them. And uh, but it all's it's it's numbers. And uh, but the, and the realtor group here, if we can shift just a little bit. Okay. WSRAR is an amazing organization and has been since 
uh, you know, since they handed out the big books you know, right, every, yeah. every Wednesday at the Elks Club. The relationship they have not only across the state but also with the local government, the um, the home builders and stuff like that is uh, – it's not replicated anywhere. First multiple listing service in, in the country or in the state? I don't know that one. Um, but just progressive. I mean, always thinking about how do we use technology? How do we get, how, you know, how are we more efficient? It's just, it's an amazing organization. And it's gone through some changes, you know, over the years. But they've, I mean, they've I've, had some bad people, you know, this year. Um, <laughs> but no, what, what I will tell you, this is, and, and I just, uh, I went to lunch with some of the NC Realtor staff because yeah. I say thank you to, to them. And, um, they're getting NC is getting ready to celebrate its hundredth, right? Which we just it's already did. had. We've already had ours, yeah. yeah. And uh, so um, it's you know the census is important. We yeah. we got to say that. So go Actually. to cityofws.org, uh, search bar census. Yep. All right. Yep. Um, so let's see. I want to jump around here a little bit because your show. Um, eh, whatever. It's you're you're, you're <laughs> the one that we, you're the guest and you're the one that everybody wants to hear. Um, I just have to do this because you know you're friends with him too. So you're, um, you're a friend of Lou's. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I was telling you earlier, I was going back listening to the show, and I'm like, man, that's some great information. And you and I, you've done our radio show and just I mean, just piled on stuff, and we're going to get to some of that stuff. But in all of your years, we're going back to 19, what, 70, 19, 1980. 1985. Right. So I we go, license. so yeah, 1985 license. But we go back to 76 of being a Wake Forest fan. Yep. Did you ever think that the game that happened a few weeks ago that you would ever see Carolina lose that bad to Wake Forest? It was a joy. It yeah, was a pleasure. There you go. So I still could not believe that. Um, and, and speaking of Wake Forest, we then roll into something of, of you and your wife are crazy. I mean, you know, I, I'm going to say it right here. Susan's an interior designer, um, but you're crazy. I cannot believe you do this. So you have a home. Mm-hmm. And then, do you have like a granny cottage or or a, a, or something like that that was that when you bought the house was there? Um, is that what it is, or did you buy the house next door? Or how did this start? Um, oh God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the first, well, we've always, I mean, since I was, we bought our first investment property when I was twenty eight. Okay, it was a five unit apartment building. Okay, so we've always had property that we've bought and restored, uh, mostly in older neighborhoods, mostly craftsman style bungalow, that kind of stuff. We've done about twenty five of them. So when we bought this house out near Wake Forest, it sits on two and a half acres. It's in the middle of the woods. Great place to raise kids. Really, we're kind of we were cutting back on our investment portfolio. Right. Until a neighbor came and said, "I'm moving." Right. Would you be interested in buying the house? And we went, nah, you know, we're really not interested in expanding that. Kids are young. And I said, Susan, why don't you just go over and see what the house is? And we found out that it was not only a house, but an extra buildable lot. Okay. So it turned into a really good deal. We split the lot off, built a house. So, right. so we had that little house. And then the, the other neighbor basically said the same thing. He was moving. Would you hey, like the to buy Macintosh, it? Is there, they bought my house. They'll, they'll, they'll buy yours, right? So we had these three houses, two of which were small. One's 830 square feet. The other's 900 square feet. Mm-hmm. So we went to San Francisco and had trouble finding a place. Finally found something through this new thing called Airbnb. Yeah, that BRB. Uh, Burbo now. Burbo. It's BRBO. I don't care. It's the Salem Parkway I'm, I'm good with. Yeah, yeah. I won't, I'm going to try won't. not to call it Business 40. It'll but it is be VRBO. VRBO. Yeah. Yes, right. So anyway, we discovered Airbnb. Right. And, <clears throat> excuse me. You're fine. And on the flight back, uh, the kids were off in college. I said to Susan, I said, do you think anybody there would be any demand in Winston-Salem for our place? Hence to the put Wake Forest comment, right? Airbnb. And so we said, well, you know, there's no, there's no barrier to entry. In it. Right. At that time, you didn't, there was not even an upfront fee. Right. So we tried it, and it sort of started to become popular. And so you have the, 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 the one first house. And basically what happens is is you advertise it, you put pictures up, you yep. ask people to subscribe, like, make comments. No, you ask them to, uh, to put, uh, you know, had, that they had a good time and rank it. Right. Um, you, when they leave, you either do it or you pay for someone to clean it up, et cetera, and stuff right. like that. Right. We hire, um, we employ yeah. people. Air, Airbnb takes their cut, you get a check for the rest. Airbnb also collects sales tax, sales tax right. and accommodation tax. And then sends you a 1099 at the end with exactly. the sales. Okay, yeah. Exactly. And so... So what we do is... It must have worked out. So we both these small houses were year-round rentals. Right. And as we started to rent our house more often, we converted one of them to Airbnb so that we could right. have that on the market, but we could choose right. which one to stay in. 
Then the other one, we put that on the market. Then we bought two more to do that. But then you did the crazy thing. What's that? You put your own personal house. Oh, yeah. No, that was the first that one. That was the first one. So you put your own personal yeah. house. So it's like, hey, uh, Susan, we're staying down the street. And then you actually had it, and I know this in the last, I don't know how when the earliest was, but we've talked about this. You've had it to where you are homeless and have no place to stay. Because every, everything's rented. When everything's rented, we leave town. Yeah. Or, well, actually, we've stayed in a hotel room here. Right, yeah. So this Go to the Campton, you know. The, this morning, yeah. we, we left the little house next door. Right. And packed up and moved downtown to our to a condo we just bought down there, a little, right. little condo in West End Boulevard. Right. Um, and it was, it's just like it's routine now. It's, we're, we're, we're gypsies. I mean, have you got the have you got the tub or something, and that's what your toiletries are in? You just carry that with you in the back of the car. We're, we're prepacked. You are a realtor. We're, yeah. yeah, we're prepacked. That's the greatest thing that I did was when we bought a we bought a condo up in uh, Banner Elk. Yeah. And I took everything that I own here uh-huh. and put it into a <laughs> container. Yeah. And then replace the stuff here. So when I go up there, I don't have to take anything. It's all there. That's so nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we have started to convert back to year-round. Okay. The management side of it is much, much more intense than just managing year-round rentals. Okay. We like to travel. I do realize, though, that there's some 20 – I mean, you're looking at – if the number's correct, of 20 to 30% greater in the um, short-term rentals – you know, you you might get fifteen hundred to two thousand on a uh, on a short term, where you might only get eight hundred to a thousand on a long term. We did the math, and there is, we figured it was a fairly small hit or smaller well, amount you of revenue. The, you have your staff too, um, right? Exactly, because you, you're paying for cleaning, you're right. paying all this other stuff. Um, so we figure we're taking a little bit of a haircut going back to year round. But the management level is just so less intense. And, and Susan has a rheumatoid arthritis issue, so right. that side of it has become you – know, that's her job more more than it is mine. So it just made sense to do that. And um, but It works. It works. And I will tell you, folks, tell your friends to vote for Jeff because Jeff has been a huge proponent of this on council when it's been brought up. And, you know, he's he's pushing to protect private property rights. If you own a home and you want to rent it out, look what is done for people that own homes in High Point. They are paying two, three, four months of their house payment by a week or two, right? two times a year. I mean, and I appreciate you protecting that. And that's that's awesome that you do that. So short-term rentals is great. Um, you talked about restoring some of this stuff. So yeah. You are a um, part-time, uh, what do you, fiddling historic preservationist restoration. And I mean, no, you, you like to restore the homes you buy, but also you've been a big proponent of that for our city, too. Yep. Um, my dad was a woodshop teacher, high okay. school woodshop teacher. And so I, I glued grew all up, it together, yeah. sanded it down, made my mom the cutting board. So I grew yeah. up working with him in, in the construction trades, doing okay. stuff. Uh, and so when I... Graduated Wake with a degree in econ mm-hmm. and having some construction background, I thought, well, wow, real estate is the perfect sort of mashup of those two things. Right. And, and so we pretty fearlessly started buying houses when we were in our late 20s mm-hmm. um, and fixing them up, not realizing it was probably, you know. Pre flipping. <laughs> there was not, the flipping term right. did not exist. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in the Holly Avenue neighborhood down that area behind the uh, Sawtooth Center, the Milton Road Center, right. we did 10 properties in there. Right. Um, a bunch in West Salem, right? Um, one in the West End, one in Sherwood Forest. So just you know, kind of all over town, but mostly in neighborhoods where our finished product was selling for a hundred to one hundred twenty-five thousand yeah. dollars, and that's done National Register standards, you know, using tax credits, historic tax credits, and all that stuff. It's interesting you say that term because now the hottest topic: National yeah. Association of Realtors, local association of Realtors. We have. I can tell you this. I sh- I have a young lady who is in town. Um, I do not know what the type of visa it is, but it's the something one. She is from China. Um, she's here with Wake Forest taking mm-hmm. some classes. She's wanting to buy a place, mm-hmm. and her investment would be that she'd buy the place, live in it. Um, her boyfriend has already bought a place over there at um, near the ballpark, the West for the fourth project there, where yeah. the um, West End Coffee Places and all yep, that. All right. yep, yep. Is, that is, West End Village. Yeah, right. Thank you for Fourth the term. Right. So he, he has a place in there. But 
what they're doing is kind of like what you and Susan did. And it's like, hey, we noticed a need. Let's do it. Um, so they're buying the place. And then what their goal is is to rent them to other Chinese students that are coming over mm-hmm. because – speak the language, yep. can put to, put together the package, the concierge type of thing of saying, hey, this is what you want to do, where you want to go. Um, showed her a Deacon Ridge, 92000 six offers, seven offers under contract. Went and showed the other one that just came on the market, 92000 a second floor unit at Deacon Ridge, I just am telling you, that was listed at 92000 was on the market. She called me about it. We scheduled a showing for that evening. I showed it. I called the agent the, that night to say, the, the next day to say I was sending an offer. And she goes, oh, well, it was under contract yesterday morning. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's under contract? She goes, well, I got to take it to sign. So you know what I did. <laughs> they ain't signed anything. <laughs> right. You got to present all offers. It'll be in your box in a minute. She called me back and said they went with the other offer. But So she has tried to buy, oh, gosh, what? Um, if I'm over near where old Vestal Buick used to be, uh, Pontiac Buick down there near uh, Cherry d- near um, Whitaker Park, oh. and you know there's those uh, the there's that apartment. I mean there's that Georgetown. complex back in there. No, it's down lower. It's down lower, closer to that intersection. I showed her one in there. Okay. Seven, ten, seven, eight, nine, ten offers. So if I want to buy a home under a hundred thousand dollars, what's happening? Okay, so we are where we are. I'm going to digress here a little bit. You're fine. Um, the financial meltdown in 2008, nothing was built from 2008 through 2014, 15. I mean, literally nothing. Stop. Nobody built anything. Yeah. In fact, I was talking to a banker, and they said there were only two people. That, there were only two builders they'd loan money to yep. at that point. Yep. Yeah. And we were still growing at about 1%. Mm-hmm. So that's roughly 2,000 people per year in, in population growth. Right. So from 2008 to 2014, that's 12,000 people that had no new accommodations built for them. Right. You know, I hear a son of Charlotte, son in Raleigh, and I hear Charlotte has an influx of 75 people per day. Right. And I think. And that's a low. And that immediately to me says there need to be at least 60 housing units finished and ready to occupy every day if it's not going to affect pricing. Right. And that's just not happening. So pricing goes up. I'm econ major, right. supply, demand. So we built nothing in Winston-Salem for 12 years, and population grew. Mm-hmm. And so when people said, I think I'll go look for a house again, right. they were having, you, know, you have to elbow other people out of the way to, to get there. So, right. so everybody's coming back to the market, and you just there's, there's, there's more demand than there is supply. Well, they are building a lot of apartments, but and, and people are like, oh, there's apartments everywhere. Well, the... No longer uh, blank, blank, innovation quarter as of the other day. Yeah. So Wake Forest, um, you know, has their school there. Right. Um, a lot of those apartments are for those students. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if that's happening, that's not satisfying what you and I are talking about. Still, Well, it, it impacts it. Right. And they're like, before they even are finished building, they put the sign up and they're, I had a friend of mine go to try and get one and they're sold out. Yeah. Yeah, so go ahead. It so it. so um, the metric that developers, and I guess more importantly that lenders use, mm-hmm. is that a healthy downtown market should be able to support 5% of the metro population. Okay. So our metro population is Forsyth County. Right. 365,000. Okay. And you know, that works out to almost 7,000 people live in downtown. Right. We have about, we have less than 4,000 living there. Okay. So there's a lot of headroom. The banks are going to continue to lend. See, Developers are going away. to continue to build. Park. There's more people down there. It's it's not. It's, it's still a fairly low number. Mm-hmm. The um, West End Station that just sold right was a, was a great deal, and there's a lot of money out there looking for right. for apartment deals. So they made a bunch of money, but in order for that deal to close, mm-hmm. they had to get to a certain occupancy rate, right. and they were releasing up ahead of schedule, what, ahead of what they thought. Right. But a buyer came along and said, I'll buy this if you're this full. Right. So they started, cut, they started cutting checks to right. people to move in, right. to breach that threshold, to have enough. Kind of like the car dealer buys, okay. buys the car for himself at the end of the month to hit that number so they yep. can get the bonus. Yep. Yeah. And so, I mean, that was, to me, that was a really smart move on their yeah. part. No, it's, I mean, what, they made 15, what's better, a million dollars or spend 30000 you know? It yeah. made several million dollars right. on the sale, so that was, a, that was a good deal for them. So everything that has been built has leased up ahead of schedule. Almost everything that's been out there long enough is at capacity. Um, um, 
what's the one at um, Fourth Street, the original, the Nissan building. Right, yeah. Nissan building has been had a waiting list. Do you remember for, how ever, the Nissan ever. the Nissan building was built with a? Oh, we're going to have a, a uh, Chris Hilton and his wife Pam were in the Nissan building because they wanted to buy that condo, and then they said we're not going to sell them. Yeah. So, yeah. well, and, and I thank Lou for that. Lou was yeah. Lou was heavily involved in that deal. The city council before me stepped up to that deal. As big a supporter as I have been in downtown since the mid '80s, I didn't think there were 140 people who wanted to live on Fourth Street. Right. It turns out there were. Yeah, and a line. So I keep looking at it. So let's do this. Let's show the website. We're going to go to cityofwinstonsalem.org. We'll go ahead and put the census um, search in for you, and we're going to put that page up here so you can see what we're talking about. This is where you want to go and get the information about the census, and then we're going to come back and talk about some more things. And the reason why I showed that here at that break is, is, you know, census, that's the other thing. That gives you realistic numbers to then still put into that formula of affordable housing. Yes. I know you guys work on poverty. You work on all these things. But if we know the numbers, who are downtown, right. then we can build those. Yeah, you can't build policy without good data behind it. Correct. And the other thing is, is there are now incentives to developers to, yeah, you can build the Taj Mahal, but if you do that, we'll cut parking out if you put this many affordable so, i mean there's all kinds of stuff that's coming i know you guys are always working on it. in fact uh i'm sure there's probably some committee that is studying this but keep going on affordable housing you know bus transportation all that kind of yeah. stuff because well so one one thing i want to sort of come back to with a conversation around what a lot of people are critical of and that's the these high these high dollar apartments and they're, they're they expensive. are furnished too though 12 to 1400 yeah. dollars a month which you know people say well who can afford that there are people lined up who can afford it and choose to live there. That's where right. they want to live. But what you got to think about is that person who's renting a fourteen hundred dollar apartment. If that apartment didn't exist for them to live in, they'd go take something else in the market, mm -hmm. right? And take one less unit. That'd be one less unit for people. They would go rent a thousand dollar unit. Mm -hmm. And that person who would have to compete for the thousand dollar unit, they'd go take away an eight hundred dollar unit. So, additional product on the market at whatever price point works for everybody it's not necessarily you know common sense but it does supply it does pull people up to the top who would normally what's, rent what's other the stuff. number that they tell us for every hundred dollars of price you lose a thousand dollars you lose a thousand people that can buy the home or something yeah. like that i yeah. think that's what they told us yeah. um so you know i'm the spc for senator low and uh you know he looked at me one day and he goes what's affordable housing and you know i i i uh, always go back and say, I kind of feel like that affordable housing is the same as the definition that the Supreme Court came up with pornography. You know <laughs> it when you see it. No one can define what affordable housing is. I'm going to take a shot at it. They're getting closer with, if you're working a 40-hour week and, and, and this type of thing, is, is it around about 600 bucks a month in rent? Is that what it is, or what, what is it now? I, I haven't, I don't, I, I can do the math after okay. we talk about this. So <clears throat> I think there are two definitions of affordable housing. Right. One is big A affordable. Right. And big A affordable is housing that people's incomes are so low that n the, the market will not take they care They need of. help. That's got to be federally funded right. or state funded. That's the Peters Creek Parkway budget in project. Right. And yeah. I'm uh, before you get that, I want to tell you something I heard at Love Out Loud um, uh, when I was at that. Were, were you able to make that? I was not there. Okay. That's right. You, you, I remember you, we talked about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, in this video, this guy says, I need for y'all to realize if you're born poor in Winston-Salem, you die poor in Winston-Salem. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big A. We have to get affordable housing so that people have the same benefits that everyone else has yep. um, and um, give a hand up rather yep. than a hand out. So you have to have a nice place to live, to, right. a secure place to live, right? right? That's on a bus line. Right. Or some other form of mass transit, which right. around here is, you know, buses are. And Tesla's not building underground tunnels. <laughs> come on. What are those things called? Anyway. Yeah. So so we'll come back to that a little bit. But right. so the other form of, the other affordable housing is little a affordable. Right. So you're big A and little a. Little a is for our firefighters, our policemen. Right. Our, the guy who. Teachers. Teachers. Right. Um, the folks who bag your groceries. Right. You know, just, there's a tremendous number of jobs out there that are, you know, decent wages but they don't allow you to spend $1,000 a month. 
right? You know, thirty percent of your income should be spent. You know, that's the metric that mm -hmm. everybody likes to use. And with this additional demand, it's just skewing prices up. That said, we are still the most affordable of any of the large cities in North Carolina, which doesn't mean it's affordable, but we're the most affordable right. of it's, any of them. It's not a compliment. Correct. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a fact, Correct. but it's not a compliment. We would rather. Uh, what I will tell you is, I'm I'm, I'm working with a client, and uh, she came in the other day, and I did you know the buyer consult. I've I've never really done one of those. It's normally people come in and go, hey, I want to buy a house, and you go in the car. But we went through, talked about the whole process and stuff, and uh, she worked for uh, one of the county things um, departments, and uh, was like, you know, I'm, I'm I get paid okay, and I've gone to this because I'm getting paid better. She said, but you know, um, so I had a house, and when my renewal came up, they raised my rent a hundred bucks. And then now it's, they're wanting to raise it again, and it's like, I'm going to go buy a house because of that. Well, guess what price range she's in? She had the three Deacon Ridge properties tagged, and I'm yeah. like, you would have been number eight in all those. I mean, it's we've got a problem, and I don't know how to address it other than we gotta, we got get we got to encourage our builders to build more. We had a really good panel discussion the other night at the Salt Box. Right. Um, up on Ivy Avenue, and it was a it was the homeless community was re was represented. Housing Authority was represented. Dee Dee Adams and I were both there. Um, Mike Kelly, the developer, was there. Richard Angino, uh, an affordable housing developer, was there. Just this really good group of people, and it's it's an amazingly complex deal. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was asked to wrap it up, and I stood up and said, you know, we are not going to find a silver bullet that solves affordable housing. We're looking for silver shotgun pellets. Right nibble away at it, do what we can. But the budget in, the city put in $600,000, which is not a small amount of money. Right. The county put in $600,000, which right. is rare for them to put money into a right. housing project. So the, that gave... And even more rare because it's inside the city limits of Winston-Salem, which is, you know... Yeah. Correct, our turf. Right, yeah. So that gave the group enough to purchase the property and tear it down. Right. They still need, they still need $10 million to build 72 units there. And that that are going to rent for three hundred bucks a month. And and Lou was Lou was very frank about how I mean it like basically took a slide rule and an abacus to get this to work. I mean you couldn't even do it on a calculator. I mean it was just crazy how, the, you know how is this going to impact it? So that project has to compete for what are called LITC, low in, low income tax credit projects. Right. There's only X amount of dollars. And there's a tremendous number of deals trying to get that those dollars. And in Forsyth County, there were two awarded out of 10 that had a perfect score. Mm -hmm. Budget in was one of those that didn't get funded. Mm -hmm. So it, the deal was as good as it can get. Right. Hit all these metrics, and it didn't get funded because right. there's not enough state funding for it. So the city of Winston-Salem, the private market, isn't going to build – we we can't ask our taxpayers to come up with the kind of money it's going to take to fix those problems. Right, they're just it's too big. Um, so it's got to come from the state or the feds. Well, um, I don't know if you know this, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a secret. Uh, you need to mark something on your calendar. It's May nineteenth. Okay. Um, that is, you're going to get some information about May nineteenth. Okay. Um, via uh, the Winston Salem Regional Association of Realtors. Um, Lawrence Yoon's going to be downtown. Really? Yes. Huh. So I may ask you to maybe throw some some oh, absolutely. Uh, ED information to us. But absolutely. Folks, Lawrence Yoon is the uh, chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. And uh, we're having him come to our membership meeting and talk and, um, you know, focusing on Winston. We could talk econ. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand half the things he says. All I do is start laughing when he says, well, how long is Billy going to live with mom and dad? That number's <laughs> gone down to six years now after college. But um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see him in a Great. few weeks and get a Excellent. little promo video together with him. But... He, uh, he's coming to town, and, you know, we're so blessed in Winston-Salem right now uh, with some things that have happened. So, you know, there's uh, the merging of the two to become that the, our, finally our Chamber of Commerce is working more in economic development. They've mm -hmm. always been a, a side partner, but now with the two of those groups right. merging, um, that's helped out. The realtors have been a sideline player, but we're trying to pump that up. We're blessed in that Jake Cashin, mm -hmm. Jake is uh, um, uh, 
uh, Mr. Brooke Cashin, as we call him. Uh, his <laughs> wife is, I mean, and he considers that a compliment. Yeah, he does. His wife is a, a successful realtor at um, Allen Tate. And um, Jake is chair of the North Carolina Realtors Economic Development mm -hmm. um, Committee. So when I came in as president, I'm like, well, we don't have an economic com development committee, and I want to try and do this crazy thing with Lawrence Union. Let's, let's create one. And so we, it's called a presidential advisory group. They let me just appoint wow. people. It's kind of, yeah, yeah. That, that was the dumbest thing ever. That's scary. Yeah, they, yeah. Um, but he, uh, I asked him if he'd chair that. So he and Caitlin Ellerwall are the are the co-chairs, oh, and, and, and appointed some really cool people on that. But so that's why Lawrence Union's coming. Economic development is, I mean, it is the linchpin mm -hmm. um, of of everything. I mean, it is uh, it's what keeps everything from falling, and and um, it it's just one of those things that we have to be conscious of. And so, with regards to um, what the Chambers doing and, and, you know, all of that stuff. Where is the Council on Economic Development? Because I know you guys have been criti criticized for we gave money to the ballpark. Yeah, yeah that, that worked out really well. Um, we loaned Dell money. Yeah, that worked out even better. I, were, I do that um, deal yeah. all over again. But, yeah, yeah, I'll do that anytime. I'll mm. loan you some money. You bring some people here, pay them, and then give us back everything. You're right. <laughs> um, but so where are you all at um, with economic development? It, it, it doesn't seem that it's that big of a partisan issue with you all. It's, it seems like everybody's <clears> – <throat> yeah. So The council, I think, across the board is supportive of using tax dollars to, um, to bring additional jobs. And to grow our workforce so that we can have workers ready for companies who are looking for workers. Charlotte and Raleigh. Raleigh right now. Raleigh. Go ahead and say that as you're talking about it. You see it right here. I wrote it down. Yeah. Because that's huge. It and is. I'm so proud of you right. guys so for doing we'll, that. Yeah. We'll come back okay. to that. We'll boomerang that. Yeah. So my, I have a son who lives in Raleigh. But if you think about the triangle, mm -hmm. you've got Duke, Carolina, State, and then you know several other good sized Meredith schools. Peace, uh, all of me, right? You've got to you have over a hundred thousand undergraduate students in that geography. Right. That's what companies want is talent. Right. We are blessed to have Wake with Sam State. We've got about twenty six thousand. So here we have in Minnesota. we have four, five, five. If you call if you Salem, Piedmont International, Piedmont International, Wake. Um, uh, UNCSA uh, and Winston Salem State, and then my alma mater, SU. You know Winston Salem State. <laughs> um, so I mean, that's uh, so. And I consider Forsyth Tech to be one of those. Uh, well, that's and that's the other. I mean, Forsyth Tech. Yeah. Uh, Gary, what was it? Gary was it Green. Bush that came here the first time and Bush started came. it all? And then Obama was huge twice. here too, twice. Mm -hmm, twice. I mean, we are so freaking lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So we have that history of Forsyth Tech. Gary Green did a tremendous job sort of keeping them nimble enough to react to a, an opportunity to, to right. train people for specific jobs. Um, and then um, the new Chancellor Spriggs, I think, is doing, a, is doing an excellent job as well. So the city has committed some money. We're, gonna, we're trying to buy down tuition there. We're buying down so what tuition. Is it, is, so Stabler's, you know, 14 or whatever here. Um, when he, when it, he's going, he's homeschooled, but he's in the county. Mm -hmm. All right. So being in the county, is it true now that he, he has two years of – of Forsyth, I mean, he he's what is what is it? It's there's, is it is it just city? What 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 is the program? Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's countywide. So it's countywide, and you get to go there for free <clears throat> or yeah, close. I'm, I'm not as well versed on the right. parameters as, as I might should be, but right. But no, no, it's, it's fine. A, it's yeah. a significant investment in right. making Forsyth Tech more affordable for more people. Right. Yeah. And well, not, you know, not just books and tuition, but some help getting there. Some help with child care, things like that, because a lot of what Forsyth Tech is retrain. Mm -hmm. So people whose industries have changed out from under them need to come back in and find out, okay, what's the next thing I need to learn to Right, to yeah, and, you know, uh, I, I think she's still there. Shireen McLean is a friend mm -hmm. of mine um, with the Sugar Center for – whenever anyone says to me, says, well, what kind of house does Sugar build? I said, well, there's a facility at Forsyth Tech that he – basically sponsors that if a woman is divorced, uh, is, you know, um, getting out of a, a relationship due to, you know, whatever, single mom, death, what, all these things, she can go there and there are counselors specific mm -hmm. to understanding what she needs to do to get up running and supporting her and her family. Yep. And Grover put some money towards that. So that's what I can tell you about it because yep. no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. <laughs> um, so, but for Site Tech, I, I went there some. Uh, I enjoyed that. 
Um, I got my master's at Winston-Salem State. Um, and uh, like I said, 2012, the first time I set foot on campus was to start to get my master's. I mean, yep. it's, it's awesome. Um, so, but it, 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 I think, doesn't, people don't think about us being a college town because those are separate, you know, entities. But the sum total of it is there's a lot of talent in this town. A lot. And, I mean, you know, we, we always say, uh, what is Amade- Amadeus, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. who was also he was also in Animal House that's how I know yeah. him but you know you go if you watched uh, the the preacher's wife in True Blood mm-hmm. she's from here yep. um, the Weeds with Mary Elizabeth she, she's yep. been through here yep. you know no one knew this but if you go into what's the name of the uh, Meridian you know yep. Meridian yep. down there where it is yep. alright so Dan Marino I believe uh, owned a yes. owned a unit in there yes all right, so he goes into the bar at Meridian, and they just opened it up. You know the two. I mean, it was like three guys that came from different. I mean, they were working at a restaurant, and they all right. pulled together to form. And it's a right. great restaurant. Oh, absolutely. So he goes, "Where's your TV?" And they're like, um, "Well, uh, Mr. Marino, we we we're just getting started, or whatever." He goes, "What's your name? <laughs> Give me your address." So Dan's working with Samsung. <laughs> sends him a TV so he can watch football when he's down there to visit his son. <laughs> I never heard that. So he comes in after it's installed, and he goes, they sent you the wrong TV. It's not as big as I wanted. And they're like, we're fine with this TV. Are you sure you're fine with this TV? Because I'll get him to bring you another TV. <laughs> and it's just like. That's great. Yeah. That's so, I mean, all this talent that comes through Winston. Yeah. I mean, what was that? Uh, did I see, was it Susan, Susan Sarandon, Sarandon was at? Yeah. Cranky's. Crankies, what the Mike heck? Bloomberg was at Foothills. Foothills, yeah. Campus gas wasn't big enough. Holy cow. They were expecting um, 50 people. They got right. about 800. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I saw something on the news uh, this morning when I was getting ready. They they're talking about um, who the next candidate's going to be to drop out of the Democratic side. And so it's like, you know, this is who it's going to be. It could be or whatever. And I'm like, man, th- you know, it's... My, it's standard, my standard response at this point in a pol- politics conversation is what? to say, I, I worry about local. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my, I'll tell you honestly. If, if you talked to me for about thirty minutes, you would probably think you knew which party I voted for, and then it'd be, oh wow, really? All right, so um, we've talked a little bit about downtown stuff, so I want to go back to this. So I told you I got a place up in in uh, Banner Elk that we right. go to occasionally. Right. One of the greatest things in the world is is I pull in to a parking space in downtown Boone, which has worse parking than mm-hmm. than Winston. I get out. And I immediately reach over into my, I don't have any coins, what am I going to do? You know what I do? I slide my credit card in because no one carries cash anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, honorable council (laughs) member, when the heck are we going to get individual metered credit cards or the group to come back to it? I want them. I knew I could bring this back to Monty Python and the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail for me is to be able to pull up to a parking space and pay with my phone, with a quarter, with right. cash or with a credit card. And I was just in a small city in Georgia, much smaller than Salem, and they had functioning multi-use right. meters about downtown. So we're working on it. All right. I, have, I would think it would be a little bit more expensive than these small towns uh, stuff in the sense of number of that you have to buy. We are by far right. the cheapest place to park of any city of any size, probably in North and South Carolina. We're 25 cents an hour. Right. So what twenty four? What being so cheap does is it allows people to p- park on the street and run down and feed the meter and run back up. It goes back to the big A thing too, because what happens is is I can go to a job interview downtown and I can park on the street and put the quarter in rather than have to park in the deck and it's different things like that. So you get you get office workers who are taking spaces away from retail right customers, and that hurts the local retailers. Right the what you'll hear when you if you survey people, and you ask what what do we need more of in terms of parking downtown? They say we, we need more free parking. Mm-hmm. There's a book out called The High Cost of Free Parking. It's mm-hmm. a great read. Free parking doesn't allocate resources the way they should be allocated. Right. Um, most cities our size or larger in North Carolina are a dollar and a quarter to a dollar fifty an hour. We're mm-hmm. twenty five cents. Yeah. So it's a, it creates a disincentive. Well, what we're doing right now is <clears throat> is if you go and valet your car overnight at one of the hotels, right. it's about what you're paying to park, self-park in other cities. Right. 
You know, there's, I mean, so we're even there. Right. Um, you said the high cost of free parking. The um, it reminded me of just a stupid thing. Do you know what the most expensive thing that a restaurant serves? Hmm. A glass of water. Why is that? They don't charge for it. They got resources. They mm-hmm. got to get it there. They yeah, got to yeah, clean yeah. the glasses and all that kind of yeah. stuff. It's mm-hmm. the most expensive thing because yeah. they don't charge for it. So that's like a Freakonomics thing. You yeah. read Freakonomics. It's yeah. a great, great book. Appalachian graduate helped write that book. Yeah. Steve Dubner. Yeah. yeah. Um, so credit card meters. Then, then so, so the do you goal, have plans for parking? Yeah, we're, we are – staff started to pull together some stuff, and uh, we've been talking about this for years. And honestly, it's such a hot topic. It is such a hotly debated topic that I have been shying away from it because – whatever decision we come up with is going to be wrong in the eyes of some segment of population and it'll be a flame war. Well, but it needs, it just, it's the point where it needs to be done. So it will roll out here fairly soon. It needs to be modern. It needs to be fair and needs to be efficient. Those are my three goals. Yeah. And CJ was on a few weeks ago and, and was like, you know, people don't realize the best deal there is, is if you come to one of our games, like a Sunday game or something, that lot's free. Yeah. So you park there and just walk. And so, yeah. So, um, so with that parking and with all these hotels, well, who's going to stay in them? And Airbnbs and VRBOs, um, man, you know, uh, I was at it. I bet you didn't even know this. The National Rod Building um, Convention is in Winston Salem. Really, it was, it was the weekend of Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's at the Ben Fitch Center. It's the wow. whole downstairs. You go in there and learn. And and can you just walk in off the street? Yeah, or yeah could it's like you fifteen have? bucks? Yeah. Yeah, huh. and um, and you uh, they have blanks there. They they have classes. They have uh, um, uh, fly fishing demonstrations and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wow. Yeah, and it's so you know. Uh, and he was he's been asked to bring it to other places. He goes, "No, Winston's good for me." But what what about conventions and our visitors? Because I know, you know, homecoming Winston Salem State, homecoming Wake Forest, uh, National Black Theater Festival. Uh, what's that little River uh, Run? Yeah, what's that little film place? Yeah, yeah, River Run. You yeah. know, I mean, all of those things are huge for us, right? And you know where River Run came from? Did you ever see the original Men in Black? The guy that played the Bug? Yeah. You know, that's the guy that owned the festival that we brought from, from that we, Brevard. From Brevard, yeah. Really? It's him and his dad owned it. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I had uh, was it Andrew? I think that used to be here. I had him on, and he talked about oh, it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. But no, so what are we doing for that? So in Preparation for, well, in conjunction with looking forward to the Business 40 shutdown, right. because we all had a 10-year look at that, right? even though some people, when it happened, said, what do you mean you're taking it out of service? Anyway, in preparation, partly in pre- preparation for that, we knew we had to up our game with the convention center. It was, right. get, it was getting a little doggy, couldn't get Wi-Fi. It was you know, not, not that great. So we... Ponied up bond money, the citizens of Winston Salem said, "Let's let's do it," and put nineteen to twenty million dollars in it. And we have gone from booking events six months in advance to now three to four years in advance. Mm-hmm. The response to the to what has been done to it's the a beautiful center facility. has Love been it. just incredible. It's busy all the time, brings people into town. Winston acts as kind of the northwest gateway or a gateway to the northwest. So when people want to come do big city things mm-hmm. from the county's sort of in the northwest part of the state. They come to Winston. They come here to shop. They come here to go to the ballet, you know, right. all that stuff. And so that draws a certain amount of convention business, but it also it draws you know, kind of day trippers or overnight trippers. People come to Winston now like 10 years ago. People were starting to go to Asheville. Well, I mean, we're many Asheville is what we're trying exactly. to get. I not think, as weird. Right, not as weird. Yeah. Um, Our housing prices are not as bad. Right. Oh, yeah, that's why we bought in Banner Elk. Um, and then the other thing is uh, – you know the the brewery. Someone's um, somebody posted something online that's like, oh, another brewery. Hey, you know what? Those are jobs. People are going to come for it. You know, go to go to Foothill's Sexual Chocolate Release and yeah. tell me that that's not a wonderful <laughs> sure. thing to have here. And if those I businesses mean, are making money, right? Yeah. What's, what's the problem? I'm ha- I'm happy to let dogs back in. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it it is uh it, it is crazy, and you know, there's there's other things that a lot of people like. I mean, doesn't Tony Atala have uh, a convention here like every other year yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we have uh, – and, and So the, all these conventions that come, you never – I mean, as the general public, you don't know who they are, but it's just a you know, wide variety of different organizations. Now, I know you do watch the chat, and I appreciate that, so please like and subscribe, people. But um, I don't know. Did you see what CJ said? Were you – did you – have you watched, watched I haven't seen his. Okay. So I think that – I think the, uh, the stadium is within 100 days of 365. Mm-hmm. So you have – the games plus like 200 or something. I mean, it's they're yeah. they're getting close to 
yeah. an event there every day. Which is smart because it's a big facility. Oh, I love well. that upstairs. The Flow yeah. Club to have an event there. Yeah. We've had uh, realtor events there. Yeah, so. it's a great All spot. Right. All right. Um, uh, two questions yep. left. One is, and you didn't know this one was coming, tell people about appointments and why they need to get involved. The mayor hit on this, so I know you're going to push it probably to the mayor, but, I mean, how many how many openings do we have right now? It's crazy, isn't it? We have 37 boards and commissions. Okay. And so when somebody comes to me and says, well, why didn't I know about this? It's important to me. I say to them, were you aware that there's a, an advisory group that comes to us with recommendations before we vote on stuff on that topic? Mm-hmm. So there's tons of those available. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like what I was talking about before. As a realtor, to get involved in committees – this lets you engage and really help shape the public policy that goes on in Winston-Salem. We're at this nice point. We're a big town, small city. Right. You can get to know your council the members. The largest you, small town in America. You can get to know your mayor. I mean, we are accessible, and you can actually influence public opinion by mm-hmm. engaging in these things. Uh, the appearance commission, and you know, there's just all these different things that everybody's going to have an affinity that lines up with one of these boards and commissions. Right. Um, so if you go on our website, cityofwinstonsalem.org, put in boards and commissions, you, you'll come to a list of things that uh, that you can volunteer for and get a tremendous amount back from, um, you know, as well as help the city. All right, perfect. Our, my toughest job as a council member is knowing what people out in the city want. Right. That's a that to me because the more just, majority of your calls are trash, um, speeders, speeders, and um, what was stormwater, stormwater, right? Yeah, right. So I know that. And I'm, okay, yeah, we that's, work that's, on that that's an easy phone call. All right. So the last question I try to sum up with this is is um, and you know again thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, this is fun. Every time we get together, I, I learn something about our our town. Um, I tell people to vote for you, but still vote for Jeff, even though he's running unopposed. So you know, I need at least two votes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I. I I've talked to Susan. She's, she's, she's on the fence. <laughs> she's but, solid. Yeah, she's, she's on the fence. Um, but uh, So I like to ask the question before we go is, where are we and where do you see Winston-Salem going? So where, where, you know, what, do you, what do you want? Yeah. Okay. We're in the middle of a transition that's been going on since I got here. Right. Of losing large-scale corporations, manufacturing, and we're in the middle, I think, of successfully moving towards a more entrepreneurial small business base. Mm-hmm. Winston's always been a really good place to grow, start and grow a business. I mean, Wachovia started here, right. Reynolds started here. You right. know, all these big companies started and grew in in this in this arena. We have a very robust startup group and and, and ecosystem, and it's not real public facing, but it's easy to sort of plug into Winston Starts, Flywheel, Venture Cafe, just. Those are all flow really now, <clears throat> um, and then uh, the the one over that's the old uh, uh, boys and girls club that uh, uh, Winston Salem State's involved, the Enterprise Center. Yep. Yeah, I mean those are all incubators. Yeah, they're all incubators, and they're all su- they're all successful. Yeah. So they're starting to turn out, you know, successful graduates mm-hmm. who are getting seed funding, who are bringing people into town. That stuff grows slowly, but it's been remarkable that. Winston Salem is now thought of on the stage, at least nationally, if not internationally, as a player. Mm-hmm. Getting that mind share is huge because now it's easier to go out and recruit people coming in. So David Mounts, Reynolds, I mean they, Haynes, they want to recruit na- national, international quality talent. And unless you have that sort of that ecosystem going on or that support system that's going to support the breweries and the cool restaurants and the great music scene that's coming back to us, mm-hmm. you know, Ramcat has done just right. marvelous Phenomenal. thing. Yeah. Um, unless you have that ecosystem, young people are not going to want to live here. And so those things all, are they're coming together. It's a slower process than we'd all like to see. But the results are starting to show up. And mm-hmm. that, I think, positions mm-hmm. us really well. Um, I think second-tier cities, I take that term – as a compliment, mm-hmm. um, I don't really want. To, I don't want to be Charlotte. I have a son in Charlotte, son in Raleigh. I like to go down there and visit, but I don't want to put up with all the negative externalities of that size of a city. I think the Greenville, South Carolina, is the Asheville, is the Winston Salem, the Chattanooga, Chattanooga. I mean, they're great places. Um, Wilmington. Yeah. Those cities give you three quarters of the amenities with half the problems. Right. You know, right. So those are. That's where I think we're going. I think we're doing a good job getting there. Well, I appreciate your service to our community for the last seven years. I'm looking forward to four more. Um, folks, this is Jeff McIntosh, the Honorable um, Northwest Northwest Ward, Ward uh, Council Member for the City of Winston-Salem. 
and uh, also a realtor. And I just appreciate you being here, and I want to say uh, thanks. But uh, before you go, everybody, please subscribe to this channel. Like, make a comment. We're trying to build this up. We're going to continue to do shows. You're listening uh, on cons uh, through Spot uh, Sir what, Spotify, I think, and we also are on um, uh, iTunes, so people yep. can listen. Yep. But uh, we're here on YouTube as well, and uh, uh, we try to send you a new episode every week on Hump Day. And this is the Camel City Chat. I'm John McPherson, Jeff McIntosh. Appreciate you guys, and we'll be back next week. Thanks. <laughs>